in. I have here the argand plane and we will use this to understand what does the addition or subtraction of complex numbers means geometrically. So let's take a quick example. Let's take z1 to be equal to 5 plus 5i and z2 to be equal to 3 plus 4i. Now if you wanted to add these, you can do that quickly analytically. And so in that case, z1 plus z2, that will be equal to 5 plus 3 gives you 8. And plus 5i plus 4i will give you 9i. So 8 plus 9i is the resultant sum of these two vector these two complex numbers. I confuse between vectors and complex numbers. But if you went on to draw these complex numbers, so if you drew 5 plus 5i on the argand plane, so 5 on the right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 5 upwards, so 5 up, so 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. So it will be this point, and let's just join that to form the line. This will be z1. This right here will be z1. If you went on to draw z2, it, will, it is 3 plus 4i, so 3 is here, and 4i is here, so somewhere it will look like this. This is z2. Now, here is the point where I need to do things a bit geometrically. So if you look at this, z1, what it does, it goes from 0, 0, to the point 5, 5, using its transformation. And z2 does the same thing, but to a different point. So z2 goes from 0, 0, the origin, to 3, 4, using its transformation. If instead, z2 started out from 5, 5, then what will happen? z2 starts here. In that case, this this z2 that, that started out its first sort of tail was at the origin. Its tail now will be located at the head of z1. So let's consider what that looks like. So this right here will be the z1 vector, z1 complex number. Again, confusion. So it will look something like this. Now, what actually happens is when you do this transformation, when you do this transformation z2 to 5 comma 5, then you arrive at, since z2 adds 3 to the real part, so 5 plus 3 is 8, and 4 to the imaginary part, you will get 8 comma 9. So this right here, the ending point, it's 8 comma 9, it's the same vector that you would have, uh, the same complex number that you would have got initially uh, by if you just resorted to adding analytically. And if you wanted to draw this complete argon diagram, what you can do is you can connect the origin to this point. So in this case, let's take it to be blue. So this right here is the sum of z1 and z2. And so basically, you give me any number of complex numbers. So if you had, let me erase the scales, the markings that are made on this graph, on the Argon diagram. So you give me any number of complex numbers. So this is one complex number. You take another complex number like this. You take another one, let's say, just a real complex number looking something like this in the gray color, what would be the sum of these three? So let's fix one of these complex numbers. Let's fix the purple one. Now let's take this pink one and shift it so that the tail of this pink one coincides with the head of the purple one. So it will look something like this. Now once you have done this, once you have sort of displaced parallelly this complex number, the pink one. Now you add to it this gray one. So this gray one, which originally started at the origin, now will start here. And let's just take a rough estimate of what it, where it will land. So let's say it lands here. And 
after completing this path, this trajectory, you get this final point. You join the origin and the final position. So from the starting position to the final position, you join them. This right here is the resultant of the sum of these three complex numbers. So if this was Z1 and this was Z2 and this was, let's say, Z3 and this was Zs, then Zs is equal to Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. If you instead had subtraction, then what do you do? So let's just take this example that we already have. We have 5 plus 5i and we have 3 plus 4i. Let me clean that mess up a bit. So let's declutter the zone. So if you, you could have done this analytically as well. So if you just instead of having the positive sign right here, you had the negative sign, then you would just subtract the real parts and the imaginary parts individually. So Z1 minus Z2, 5 minus 3 will give you 2. 5 minus 3 gives us 2. Plus 5 minus 4 gives you 1. And 1 times i is just i. So this is the difference between Z1 and Z2. And if you wanted to observe this graphically, what you do is let's first draw Z1. So Z1, let's say, looked something like this. 5 plus 5i. The Z2 complex number that looked somewhat like this. Since we are not adding them right now, so we won't displace them like this and call it a day. What we can instead do is we can write Z1 minus Z2 as Z1 plus negative of Z2. Why do we do that? Since we know the graphical addition, but we don't know about the graphical subtraction. So since these two are the same expressions, we need to find out a way to represent negative of Z2. Now negative of Z2, gra geometrically what it would mean is that if this Z2 vector was going X units to the right and Y units to, to, the, to up, so y, X units right and Y units up, negative of z2 will go to opposite. So it will go x units, but in the left direction. It will go y units, but downwards. And so in this case, you'll just like invert the, you'll just take 180 degrees flip of the z2 to get negative of z2. So it will look something like, it will look something like this. Now this is negative z2. This was Z2, this is negative Z2. The difference between them is 180 degrees angle. That's it, the same magnitude, just the opposite direction. Now you can add these two complex numbers. So you bring this Z2, let's just, negative Z2, let's just erase this Z2 complex number completely. Let's bring this negative Z2 complex number from here and displace it to here. So it will look something like this. And once you have done this, that there it would be a bit smaller. So something like this. Once you have done this, now you just need to connect the starting point, the origin and the final point. So this right here will be your resultant difference. And if I would have done it completely to scale, then this point would have been two comma one. Since we also got two plus i from here, you can confidently say by drawing it with scale and uh, with every appropriate stuff, you can get the exact point that you're looking for. So the main idea basically would be to add two complex numbers. Let's just forget the argon plane for now. If you wanted to add these two complex numbers, you will first displace one of these complex numbers. So let's displace the blue one parallelly and let's align it like this. And whatever end point you get by doing that, you join these two together and that would give you the resultant complex addition, complex number addition. If you instead wanted to subtract these, if you let's say wanted to subtract the blue one 
from the blue one you wanted to subtract the purple one because that looks a bit easier to draw if you wanted to do that then first you will invert you will not invert you will uh, rotate this purple vector purple complex number in a direction of 180 degrees uh, counterclockwise or clockwise really doesn't matter and you will let's say get something like this uh, I can do better so something like this and now these two are the vectors that we need to add these two are the first one is the blue the blue complex number and this negative complex number now you can add these so I will now displace this complex number right here to align here it will look something like this I can still do better so something like oops that's really really bad and so something like this this if this is the end point you will join them call it a day this is the geometrical interpretation of the difference of two complex numbers so hopefully you get the idea it's just about displacing the complex number to match the tails and the heads see you in the next videos